and welcome to the 72 pin connector podcast with us this week we have eric what's up he's back i'm back i'm alive he's back i'm here i dropped my controller he survived the wilderness <laughs> and we have the tom survived me <laughs> mm. what is that coffee what is that? delicious like coffee a, i couldn't see you it sounded like you took a drag <laughs> yeah. He's I, I, only, I only smoke my coffee now it's way more efficient <laughs> that's what i'm talking about uh we're gonna I be playing some rocket league as usual um i guess we can go ahead and jump into the games eric is updating his game right now so he'll be in shortly <laughs> i've got about 30 seconds nice okay we'll do 3v3 oh yeah so how's your guys' week's been how's it going not too bad. What's up, Smoke? Early Smoke's in, in the, the chat. chat. What's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I took Monday off work. I'm going to play video games. It's going to be great. Nice. Nice. That sounds fantastic. Very well, I've, got like, I've got like all of these vacation days because I usually like take a trip to Ohio or two per year. Mm -hmm. And that's like a week long trip. Well, with gestures broadly at everything <laughs> i haven't used vacation days so i've oh, just got a pile yeah. so i'm just making three-day weekends left and right let's go <laughs> that's nice. awesome i think i did that one year i didn't use any vacation days like all year so for the last like month and a half of work i pretty much just worked or i took every monday and friday off for like nice. i don't know how many weeks in a row <laughs> that is great it's fantastic yeah I think we should just switch to the three-day work week. Yes. Dude, I am all about that. 40, 40 hours a week is a lot to ask for people. I think we can eventually get to a point where we don't have to do that. That well, would be great. Let's be real. Like, the first half of Monday for me usually is kind of one of those, uh, recovering from the weekend, kind of, you know, not really feeling super productive. And then Friday afternoon, you're not mm -hmm. getting shit done on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> So let's just cut it up. Let's just say, all right, we're going to make a four day work week. No Mondays, no, no nothing. Just go. I would but, like a four day tens. I can get behind that. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know about that. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of those. I would even be more of a fan of a 312. No, oh, no, I, I can't. I can't do a 12. As somebody who has worked those 12 hour shifts. Nah, nah, dog. I'm out. I don't mind. I like it. If I know that the payoff is I will have four day weekends all the time, every time <laughs> I'm down. I mean, I guess that does get into like kind of a like less than half of your time is spent or about half of your time is spent working and the other half is spent, you know, doing whatever the fuck you want. That's mm -hmm. kind of yeah. cool. But I also yeah. don't want to have like the first two days be recovery from 12 yeah. hour shifts. <laughs> Well, see, to me, the thing is, like, what you can do on a day where you don't work at all versus what you do after work is day and night. That's like, true. Like, a day you work, yes, you got those hours after work, but you can't do everything you could. Yeah, you can't go on, like, an, an overnight camping trip or anything like that or, you know, go to a, a New Year's Eve party and, you know, everything yeah. that's involved in that. So, I mean, it's, I, I get that it's long days, but I would really, really, really like that. But yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm a fan of flexibility and work schedules generally. I wouldn't mind yeah, just working just less nice. overall. <laughs> yeah. That's the dream, isn't it? You you figure out how to work less and still make as much money? Yeah, exactly. Let me know. I am I'm down for that plan. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't know. Well, maybe one day everybody will get to work less. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's the dream, baby. That's the You've dream. You've got that's nothing dream, to lose dude. but your chains, comrade. <laughs> I don't know about necessarily that way, but <laughs> <laughs> not exactly what I had in mind. But you know, it's no, too I, late. I, the people's revolution is here. Oh uh, God, you need to play. Yeah, I know exactly. Everyone's like, "Damn it, Tom!" You need to just play <laughs> Bioshock again or something, Tom. <laughs> No, but I took the wrong message away from Bioshock. <laughs> like, that's the thing. If I play Bioshock again, I'd get worse. Oh, I'm awful <laughs> at this game. 
It's all right. I'm I'm not any good. I totally just let a goal through for funsies. I actually played a little bit today, not on like a podcast. Wow. I just kind of played just because. Yeah, I'm, so I'm excited. This, this is going to be the last podcast I play with graphics at high quality or high performance setting on a uh, mobile laptop. Oh, yeah. It'd be nice to get back to the setup, huh? Yeah, I'll be out next weekend, but then after that, I mean, I'll be I'll be back in Washington, fellas. Nice. Cool. Actually, I'm um, taking all. So this next week, I'm in Ohio, and then taking the entire next week off, and we're actually going to take some time going cross country. So like we're going to oh, spend the good. entire day Yellowstone. Oh, good, that's rad. Going to see the Badlands. Um, maybe go to Jackson Hole. It's it's going to be super super freaking nice. Yeah. I felt kind of sad for you when you were talking about driving out here initially, because I'm because I'm like, man, you passed by so much cool stuff. Like, I wish you guys would have taken more time and like went to see everything. So I'm glad you're doing that on the way back. Yeah, and even the one we were like, okay, we'll be able to see it from Interstate, uh, mm. Devil's Tower or whatever it's called. Um, well, we was in the middle of a freaking thunderstorm, so you couldn't see shit when we went through it. Oh, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, well, that's a rip. Uh, but yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be real nice. I did Just make some um, interesting food today, though. Ooh, the, the no. really let's talk about it. I, I want to perfect this because I think it could be good. So for Father's Day, my sister always made this tradition where we'll we'll make the meals. So I have a stepdad and a dad. So for uh, breakfast, we made um, peach pancakes. Where actually uh, diced up some peaches and made a simple syrup out of them in a skillet, and then added that instead of water into pancake mix. Ooh, the pancakes themselves were decent. Mm -hmm. I could have used actually even more peaches, Ooh. but it's like the idea. I'm like, okay, I like this. I, I think we can play with this. Maybe do it with strawberries next time. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not big on peaches. I've never been big on peaches. I'm not big on fruit in general honestly like, I like fresh it. i can i can eat fresh fruit i like fresh fruit but i really dislike like fruit desserts where they're the cook the fruits like cooked with sugar and stuff i don't like those yeah at all. it's like a gelatin like apple pie kind of thing. yeah yeah anything oh, like I that I, I just can't do it i don't know apple pie hot out of the oven and i'm normally not a huge ice cream guy but man you put a scoop of vanilla ice cream oh, next to that gotta get the vanilla. <laughs> oh fuck yeah dude that is just so good I, I like it even better if it's got like the uh, a cinnamon sugar crust. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like like you need that like crust. sugary crunch on the end of it. Mm. Do you like it uh, covered or naked? Like the upper the crust on top. Uh, crust on top always. Yeah. Because half of the reason I'm eating apple pie is for the crust. Dutch apple pie comrades calling out. Hell yes. Yeah, that's how, that's how it needs to be. Oh, no. Dutch apple pie, an American staple. <laughs> <laughs> also, French fries, an American staple. Yes. Yep. Freedom fries, motherfucker. What are you talking about? <laughs> Freedom fries. I can't believe that was a thing for a minute. <laughs> Freedom toast. Freedom fries. I'm just imagining French fries, but instead of being deep fried in like oil, it's just straight melted butter. Freedom non? Can we have freedom deep, non? Deep fried in butter. Is that a thing? I feel like deep butter would butter. burn. I fry in to... butter, but... Yeah, but deep fry. I'm talking like gallons of hard. butter. Like a gallon of butter. <laughs> I can see you going to the store buying like $100 worth of butter just to be able to fill a five-gallon <laughs> bucket full to deep fry something. Right. That would taste so good on certain things like uh, deep fried mushrooms. Get them with butter. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I love me some deep fried shrooms. So, Eric, how's oh. that how's that game update coming? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's uh, let's jump out of here and get back to the main menu, and we'll get Eric in. Actually, oh, right. oh already already all right, that's fine. We'll do it live. Fuck, it, we'll do it live. <laughs> but um, I also have one other food thing, but it's not exciting for most of you guys from the Midwest. Uh, around the Great Lakes, but um, out in Washington, when it comes to fish to eat, there's salmon and there's um, trout, and that's all they do. You're in the Midwest, you have walleye, but you also have a uh, nice little fish called the perch, and 
God, that is some of the best eating fish I can you can ever get. Is it? So I don't finally think got it. me a perch, perch dinner because they don't have any of that out west. Ah, oh, so good, so so good. Cool. Sounds Might good. I like fish. I don't eat fish enough. I like fish, but I never, I never eat it. I never buy it. I never order it anywhere. Agreed. I don't know why. Honestly, I just um, don't eat it I enough. Get the I guess. I get the fried shit. Like I'll do a uh, deep fried walleye. Oh, that's good. But, like I won't order salmon at a restaurant. I don't know why. I just never do. I will always order salmon at a restaurant because they can cook it way better than I can. Out. Well, then just cook it more often. That's that's probably the play. <laughs> I think actually, got, I, I got a tab open on my phone for like teriyaki glazed salmon. Got. I've got a frozen like haunch of salmon back there. A whole haunch. Haunch. Uh, yeah, and I, I have not <laughs> made it. I need to. So we did uh Korean barbecue uh salmon on Tuesday. Oh, that it was my mother in law's uh birthday. And so she bought salmon for about there was about eight people. The guy behind the counter um kind of worked her over and for eight people he suggested that she buy 10 fucking pounds of salmon <laughs> Jesus. all right so uh there was a lot left over but it was good i've never had korean barbecue sauce in general let alone something like that on salmon i kind of dug it korean, korean barbecue, barbecue is amazing, amazing. oh my god the first time i had korean barbecue like i took my first bite and I didn't say a word for the rest of the meal. I just stuffed my goddamn face <laughs> the entire time. I still yeah, I reminisce I... about the time we went to the when we went to RLCS and went to this Korean barbecue place. And I think I reminisce more about the barbecue place than I did actually seeing like the the Rocket the League post. Super Bowl at the time. <laughs> I mean, man, when you get some good food, it doesn't matter. Like that that's instant memory, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, Renee's it. calling out on there is a there is a fish I order. It's uh, at uh, the store place that we go with uh, Tom and Renee, the hot pot, and we get the white fish there. That's really good. Hmm. Hot pot. I need some hot pot. Did we hot pot with you, Adam? Nope. I don't think we. No, we didn't. Didn't hot pot. Mm, we're gonna we have get, to. We yeah, we got to remedy that. We got to get you back out west at some point. That would be nice. That would be really nice. Loved it out there. Comrade says that is a crime. <laughs> yes. Well, I think well, last time I was out there, Tom, you were like tied up with something, and I can't remember what it was. You had like I family. Had, you had family over or something, right? Yeah. It was, oh, his, yeah. It was Renee. Was it Renee's parents? Yeah. Yeah. Renee's okay. parents were out, so we were we were doing all kinds of stuff with them. Yeah. yeah and we, the nice thing is, that. well, the good thing is, Adam, you get back out. We've already done some of the touristy stuff, so we can do more of the cool, cool shit. Yeah. yeah, I'm all about it. Because, I mean, anyone's first time, you know, I make fun of it. But, like, you at least have to drive <laughs> by the needle to see it. Yeah, yeah. And have to see Pike. Like, I feel those two are, like, pretty quintessential. You should probably check out kind of I places. mean, Pike's kind of cool anyway. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, you've got that if... Russian bakery that was fantastic. Oh, oh man, so, that like... place is nuts. I found so... out there's a couple of those. Oh, Okay. And the other ones actually, the ones not in Pike Place are even better. Are you talking about okay. Kroshki Proshki, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that I place I is this. insane. Oh, I, that was my first time going there when I was with Adam, and we're looking at this. We're like, well, shit, all this stuff sounds good. So we both got two and then just split them half each. We each got a, I think we each got like one sweet pastry and, and one, one savory. savory. Yeah. Yeah, so like so you I can get like a, a nice smoked salmon and mushroom or something like that. I think is what I got. It's just weird to think that you can get like a salmon and mushroom pastry, and then turn mm. around and get like an apple turnover type pastry <laughs> <laughs> at the same from the, place. from the same place on yeah. the same menu. And uh, Dobby's saying he's been lobbying for a food trip in a while. I mean, if if people decide that hey they want to come do a food trip, get a lot of us. Let's do it. I'm down. Yeah, for let's it. go. Let's go. Like I, I don't we will worry. I'll go to Mongolian hot pot. We will have a good old time. <laughs> there will be no talk of me wanting to go fishing. It'll be a food adventure the whole time. Oh yeah, I'd be down to go fishing. I don't know what you're talking we, about. We we will go to some some fancy Seattle coffee shops. You'll spend way too much on a single cup of coffee, and it'll be worth it. 
No. I don't think it's too yeah. much. I there's it's not like you're spending. You're never yeah. gonna spend like fifteen bucks on a cup. Have right? Ever, like you, even the fancy cup? places, you're spending a max like what eight bucks maybe. If for if you're getting fancy, it depends. Stuff, if getting, yeah, if you're getting depends. straight, if you're getting straight coffee though, it's only no. about two bucks. I uh, probably uh, about probably four. four or five. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah, like for those, for for really nice coffee that was fresh roasted and you know, like a pour over no, coffee or something. Okay, no, okay. Dobby, pour pour not over. Starbucks. We're talking about Storyville coffee in Seattle, down at the Pike Place Market. Storyville is the bomb. Now, I did buy like they don't sell their coffee by the pound; they sell it by the half pound, and it's still like twenty two bucks per package. It is. <laughs> stupid expensive so i only yeah. get it on special occasions but it is so good sometimes it's worth it to just spend a lot of money on something <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just enjoy it. we're going dunkin donuts i like dunkin donuts i don't care i do too dunkin is good dunkin got, dark is solid coffee dude i got my trash mocha this morning i got one more trash before mocha. I, <laughs> dude, I love the trash mocha what's a trash from, mocha from Tim Hort- timmy's yeah hot chocolate and black coffee because because they call it it's not it's not a um what is it it's not a cafe mocha because that implies yeah. espresso it's a coffee mocha coffee where mocha. they just take whatever base just trash mocha hot, hot chocolate to it, but it's so good if you want a I real mean, if you want a real trash mocha go to a gas station with those like instant <laughs> machines and then just do like half <laughs> cappuccino and half coffee <laughs> Yeah. Their cappuccinos out of these machines are so fucking good. No, they're not. <laughs> yes, they are. They taste they're delicious. They're not great. They're not they're great. Fine. Okay, no, no, you they're fine. Them. I accept them. I will accept them. <laughs> okay, if you're talking actual like flavor tasting good, I think they taste better than real cappuccinos because real cappuccinos actually don't taste like really sweet and shit. That's that's good though. Like sometimes that's nice. Yes, yeah. but I'm just saying. Like to me, I find them delicious. I understand, but it's the same kind of reason I find hot chocolate delicious. That's fair. Yeah, it's... We get a group. Let's do it. I'm down. Yeah. We, we so will have a 72 pin connector food coma extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, since we don't do Ribs Fest anymore. Yeah. Oh, I miss Ribs Fest. Yeah. That was a good time. I was talking <sighs> about Ribs Fest the other day. I, I, uh, I told Renee that um, the invention of barbecue and ribs happened at that location 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I man, that, so. that, was, that was always a good fucking time. That, man, that was, you'd always find some good ones. Mm-hmm. Always find some good ones. And then always by the end of the trip, you just want some fucking vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> I need something green, please. Yeah. My body broccoli. is turning inside out. Give me some broccoli. I have to start bringing emergency broccoli next time. <laughs> you should keep okay. a, a, back, a backup a salad, broccoli. some emergency in case of emergency break glass kind of thing. Like some light, light Italian or a vinaigrette. Yeah. It's like light flavors only for the next week. Okay. So <laughs> if you guys had one veggie to pick, what is your go to, though? Uh, broccoli. I, I think broccoli. that is mine. Maybe red pepper. Like. Oh, okay. All right. Red pepper is fucking delicious. Broccoli's good too. Um, I also really like asparagus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dobby, Brussels spree outs. No, hey. you can you can fuck off with your Brussels. We had this spree conversation out. last week. <laughs> Man, Brussels sprouts are delicious. You like cut them in half, roast them, oh. and season them on a roasting oh. pan. Oh hell yes. Nah, nah. Nah. Get out of here, you child! It's nah. delicious. Give me, give me green beans, beans, green beans, green beans, green beans, green beans, cauliflower, all of it. I should have added more whiskey to this coffee. Cauliflower <laughs> is only <laughs> cauliflower is only good when served with broccoli. I like straight I like, up cauliflower. Uh, yeah, have you ever had rice cauliflower, where you basically just replace rice uh-huh. with? I, I think that's actually pretty good. It is, yeah. I mean, it's not as good as rice, but it's pretty I've good. I've got some in my fridge right now. Also, d coming in strong with corn as the superior veggie. Uh, oh, corn, corn is- Honestly, corn is great. Yeah. That's, is it a vegetable, so really, though? Like, it's 
It's a grain. We actually looked this up last night. It is a grain, and technically, it is a fruit. <laughs> Dobby comes in with the all it does is make you shit. There's no benefit to it. <laughs> I mean, you, he's not wrong. No. He's not wrong. What? The husks come back out, but you actually ate the inside and you digest it. <laughs> okay, okay. It's like the shell. Like a spider. Yeah. Yeah. What? Sure. I don't eat spiders. So <laughs> or a I snake. Spider. Yeah. Things that <laughs> molt. $1,000 pyramid. What? What? $10,000 pyramid? Okay. What? Never mind. I'm, yeah. alone. I'm alone. <laughs> All right, guys. So, <laughs> like, you, okay, it's the old game show, like where they would give phrases like um, a snake, um, other lizards, and the answer would be things that molt. Oh, so the person would be trying to guess that from the clue giver. I can't like family you guys don't feud. Know that. <laughs> All right, boomer. <laughs> okay, boomer. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I've been getting hit with OK Boomers all week when telling people about like the Half Life series and like I'm I'm playing their original and somebody's like I don't even know what Half Life is and then I started telling about the history of Valve Software and how Gabe was at Microsoft and he wanted to make video games and and then I get hit with the OK Boomer and I'm like ah shit I'm old as fuck. I mean we are kind of <laughs> old, getting old, yeah. but that's okay. Erk, we eat oh, all day and plan party. Oh, yeah, okay. I can get behind Scott's suggestion for the idea for Seattle. <laughs> we just go out all day eating food and then just land party it in the den at my house. Yeah, yeah, I'm 100% good with that. There we go. Let, let's get this in motion. We haven't had a 72 pin connector land party in years. Geez, like, years. Yeah. I think your house is the last one we did. Yep. Yeah. It's been too long. Uh, land parties are fun. All right, I so it. I found something, found a Doritos flavor that is now my ultimate favorite, but I can only eat a few of them at a time because it burns my face off. Is it the flavor of nacho? Oh. No, no, oh, it's even those are so better. Good. It's even better. So uh, you guys are familiar with the uh, the incredible hot sauce Tapatio, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had it in a uh, while. Like I can I couldn't identify it if you gave me five hot sauces and asked me which yeah, one was nah, Tapatio. Nah. But it's solid it's got a good flavor it's got good heat to it they have official tapatio doritos mm. and they are amazing the only downside is they are hot as shit <laughs> so i can i can eat I a major like, handful for like grabbing a glass of milk or, or just stopping altogether hmm. i'm gonna have to try that i really like the flame and i, hot like ones. I seen... had those a little bit ago yeah those are so good not I think as good better as the than Hot Cheetos, though. I think they're better. You're, you're about to go the other way with that. Yep, yep. Because uh, flaming hot Cheetos don't have a lot of like cheese flavor, but the the nacho Dorito ones kind of do. Yeah. But I'm also typically not a huge nacho Dorito fan. Oh, yeah. Those are my like jam. if I get a Dorito, that's not my go-to. But yeah, Tapatio Doritos. If you can find them, go go pick up a bag. Don't like pick up a bag those. if you hate spicy things because you're just going to ruin yourself. But if you like <laughs> spicy things, they're great. Does I think Tapatio has a super unique flavor. I think you could. I think I've only maybe tried it once, so I don't. I don't remember what it tastes like at all. I've I've got a bottle of Tapatio just just to have it. Tapatio. And, and I like the name though. I like the name a lot. Thank you very much for the sub. Tapatio. Oh. Smiggle hit us with those. Smiggle wants the sub. Nice. Thank you. It's the hot sauce of Cadoba. Yeah, I know what Tapatio okay. is, but I'm <laughs> I still don't know what it tastes like. I just remember vaguely liking it. What's the one that has the uh, Hispanic woman on it with the cork top? That doesn't narrow it. Oh, uh, oh, how yeah, do you, I, I know exactly Cholula what you're talking. About. Cholula. Yeah, that well, yeah, that one's good too. I like that, but that's at almost every place I go yeah. in Seattle. Area. I like the um, El Yucateco. There's always like a green one and a red one at every Mexican restaurant ever. I think you know it if you saw it. I like that yeah. one a lot too. I, I don't like the red know one. my hot sauces too well. I just know when I have one I like. 
which I know is not beneficial because then it's hard to buy them. I mean, you could have tried a lot when you were at my house, that one podcast. That is true. That was one of the most baffling things in my life, opening up a fridge and just seeing a door of hot sauce. Uh, can, <laughs> An literally... entire fucking door of hot no, sauce. No, it's not the whole door. It's one of the shelves on the door is completely packed with hot sauce bottles. <laughs> no, Which is too many. It. It, it was just same. crazy. Honestly, I need to throw some of them away. They've been in there a while. Indeed. Tom's staying hydrated. Oh, Smiggle redeemed. Stay hydrated. Let's oh. do it. There we go. Hydrate. Gotta stay hydrated. Stay hydrated out there, boys. I don't What's hate up? Sriracha. I think it gets overused. Agreed. Like, it's good it's in good. small amounts, and it's good in certain things, but people put it on fucking oh. everything. It got trendy as shit. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever uh, that that bugged me about it, there's nothing wrong Have with something ever... being trendy though. Like if everybody likes it, good yeah. for them. But although is it is it sriracha or are we calling it cock sauce? Like I don't I don't know which one we actually have. <laughs> sriracha. Okay. No, cock sauce is uh, short for cocktail sauce. Oh yeah. Okay. Also short for uh, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> um, actually ever cooked like in a frying pan with sriracha. No. <laughs> yeah, I think it so. It can be hard to breathe, man. Yeah. You got to be careful well, with the hot sauces when you're, like, frying something up. The uh, actual factory that makes it, I think, was in California. And the residents had to sue uh, to get them to add in, like, literal carbon filters on their output. Because it would just stink up the whole fucking town. Hmm. Oh, I can imagine. And that would potentially, not necessarily burn, but make it really hard to breathe. Yeah. Tom of the game winner. Um, nice so, job. games. I mean, unless games? you guys have any more foods. Did anyone have any other food? Foods oh, I feel like I did, but I can't remember. Yeah, I got nothing for you. What did I try? Hmm. In that case, yeah. Games, fellas. Uh, been... So, Magic Dave picked this up. I watched him stream a little bit, and then I bought it. Uh, Torchlight 3. It's out. It's ah, out in early access. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I uh, played a little bit of that, and Magic Dave is 100% spot on. It's not really a game yet. Um, it is It is definitely early. It's not early really access. a game yet? Like, okay, the game, it's, it's a game. I don't game. care how it's early cool. access you are. If you're having someone buy it, you should not be able to say that. Yeah, I know. It's It's got really thin levels of like it, it plays like a stripped down version of Torchlight 2 right now. You can see where they're going with it. Like they have some great ideas, but none of them are implemented. I think this is a thing like, hey, we need funding. We're going to put out an alpha. Tell us what you hate about it. Uh, unfortunately, on day one, their servers were having massive issues. And this kind of like ekes Torchlight over into MMO territory with what they're trying to do. So you have to log in. Um, so they launched the game. No one can play it. It got review bombed. It's not nearly as bad as it says on Steam. It's fine. It's playable. It's not the level of depth you're going to get in Torchlight 2. And don't ever walk into a Torchlight game expecting Path of Exile or anything like that. It is not that kind of game. Uh, but don't, it's walk in, don't walk into any ARPG expecting, expecting Path of Exile. That yeah. talent tree is absurd. Yeah, agree. So VW so, um, calls out, um, he disagrees with you. Because he says there's 20 to 25 hours of story and four, four full characters. He says he yes, has like are... 13 hours in it so far and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. So take it from, some, from somebody who played a shit ton of Torchlight 2. I don't think the level of content is quite up to, to those standards. Um, well, I mean, it's early access, though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's it's not a bad thing. Like, I'm not ripping the game or saying you shouldn't buy it. I'm saying that if you do, um, be prepared to you know, for stuff to be a little thin, at least initially. They are still building the game. They are still adding stuff, and that's all good. But, you know, you can't go in expecting this massive, like, 90-hour ARPG. That's not what you're going to get out of Torchlight 3 right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fine. I like it. I enjoy it. 30, I think, is a little pricey for what you're getting out of the box. Um, but that price will increase as they add more stuff. So if you want it early, you're, you know, you're basically trading off features and stuff like that for a lower price, which I think is totally fine. 
And then you'll get it later, though. So, I mean, it's yeah, not exactly. like you have to bot pay more later. You get yeah. the game at a cheaper overall price if you're willing to pay now. Yeah, exactly. Which is the way that I always anticipated. Like, back in the day when I first heard about early access, that's what I thought it was going to be. Like a reward program for those who had trust. Mm -hmm. That's but what it's it always, supposed to be, really. But then it always ended up being like, oh, it's the same price. <laughs> yeah. Or in worst case scenarios, you're actually paying more for the early access in the fucking game as it launch. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's infuriating. Yeah, you're paying for the privilege of accessing this game early. Yeah. Before it's a game. Have fun. So Dobby's saying that he thinks it's more of a game than Minecraft Dungeons, and I don't know if I agree. While Dungeons is intentionally simplified, I think it feels like a more complete product than Torchlight 3 does today. Um, and again, that's not a bad thing. This is early access. It says it on the tin. The game is not finished. You are quite literally shoveling the devs' money to help them build this thing to something bigger and better, which is great. Just don't go in expecting Diablo 3 or anything like that, or even Torchlight 2. It's just not there yet. I'll, I'll probably check it out at some point. I picked up Torchlight, never played it too much. But with Boulder's Gate 3 <clears throat> at some point soon, I don't know if I could really put time into something like that at this point. Because I know as yeah. soon as Boulder's Gate comes out, like that's where my time's going. Yeah. Super, super jazzed about that shit. Uh, so I was doing some more Animal Crossing. That shit is still fun. I can't believe I'm still playing that. Do you have a, a giant house mansion thing with a bunch of stuff in it now? Yeah, I'm still trying to like really piece together really nice rooms. Like not just like, oh, this thing's cool, this thing's cool, this thing's cool. But actually like these pieces all go together. And that gets a little hard because you really only get to buy like three items a day. Yeah. So it's either you have to talk to other people, know what they have, or you just have to fucking wait. Or get some um, blueprint or um, blueprints, cheesy peach uh, recipes. Yeah. Which I think is one of the funnest things is getting your daily recipe off the shore just to see what you get. Daily but, recipe? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're guaranteed to get a new recipe every day. If you walk your beach, there's going to be like this message in a bottle that'll oh. tell you how to make something. And there's, cool. there's a fuck ton of recipes. So you're getting a lot of shit you don't like. And then every once in a while, like, oh, that's fucking cool. Mm. Like I get, I have this upright street piano that I can make. And it's a really cool looking like street piano. The problem is I need to have a regular piano first. And I don't have the recipe to make that. Oh, okay. So it's like shit, and you get caught in some of those. But yeah, I've been doing a little bit of that, and um, only other thing I've been playing, uh, Slay the Spire, still rocking that. Still God, that rocking game's it. so good. Oh, <laughs> so I good. Forgot. I forgot. Uh, I actually just bought Slay the Spire. Oh, again? cool. Like, again. On, Where'd you get it on? On my phone. So uh, nice. they just released the iOS port of Slay the Spire. So now. I can play Slay the Spire on the toilet without having my Switch. I was going to say, that's uh, what the Switch is for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but like, sometimes you forget your Switch and you're already sitting down. You're like, man, well, I got this phone. I can either, you know, watch another episode of the excellent Batman animated series or I could play Slay the Spire. They seriously need to get the fucking cross-play, or not cross-play, but cross-account stuff set up. Um, They really, really, really need to do that. And no, Dobby, I have not seen Monster Train, nor know what Monster Train is. Monster Train. It's like a monster truck, but a train. It's pretty cool. I can get behind monster that. <laughs> Mega Goliath versus Ultra Goliath. <laughs> But no, once they get that, that'd be great because I got so much further on the PC than the Switch, and now I'm just playing catch up, and that sucks. Mm. Ah. You're gonna be playing catch up in Tarkov next time you play too. Oh god, that's gonna be fucking awful. I mean, it's gonna be great. Hopefully, customs has calmed down some at that point. Uh, that's everything's about. I don't want to say it's back to normal, but it's back to. Uh, I don't know. Roughly where we were when we first started playing it, the, the first uh, update. Okay, that ain't bad. I case, with, I the, with the exception again. of like the changes to the economy, 
that have resulted from the the um, flea market limitations and stuff. Yeah. Which and is I've still got a game. brand new guy, so we can we can run yeah. through it together. I'll try to hang on to like quest keys and stuff for you guys so that we can run the quest without you having to like find the keys and buy them and stuff. Yeah, that'll be really nice. Well, you already got a documents case from your drops, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I got a docs case in the drops. That's nice. That's a really useful thing so you can keep a hold of a lot of shit without worrying about space. Yeah. Because yeah, when you start keys. getting keys, they're nice to have, but they eat up space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been very nice to have that. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, a lot of the streamers are streaming Escape from Tarkov on a big giant event with uh, item drops. So you can, you know, it's like a different list of streamers every day. I think today's the last exclusive day. And then I think from tomorrow until the, I don't remember. I can't remember when it, when it ends exactly, but uh, basically all the people on that list will be streaming and you can, you can get item drops. So link your Twitch account to your battle state games thing and get free stuff. Yeah, I don't have my work laptop set up for it, so couldn't really do it. Oh, uh, that sucks. Yeah, which sucks. I'm going to be way far behind, but it's going to be fun. Like it's that, fun. I, like I, like you said, the, the idea of getting the back on that grind sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun either way, for sure. Except today, I played, I think, maybe 10 raids today. I survived exactly one of them. Ooh. Oh, man. It's one of those days. I just like, I just want to get this stupid quest done. Leave me alone. But every single time I'd run into somebody and just get wrecked. That's the worst. Yeah. It's like, I just want to do this. Let me do this. Yeah. And they're like, nope. It doesn't oh, help man, that I'm like really bad at PvP combat too. So I feel like I can handle scavs no problem, but as soon as I run into somebody that's controlled by a person, I just get wrecked most of the time. That's Not every how. time. But yeah. I can have better it's gear, it doesn't like matter. Hot, yeah. <laughs> Some people have a knack for it. I, I don't have a natural knack for it at all. Rob's a fucking killer. Yeah, Rob yeah. is <laughs> Rob's crazy. Like, there's no other way to say it. he's just a fucking killer, and he's already getting the M4 mod game. Yeah, didn't take him long to get back to that. I can just so, hope that I get there soon. I uh, I have tried a new game actually just today, and I don't think I'm going to try it again for probably uh, the Steam release. Yeah, um, or until the Steam release. So Dwarf Fortress has been out basically forever. Yeah. Um, in case you don't know what Dwarf Fortress is, it is quite literally like an RTS-ish city builder sort of thing with dwarves and super ingrained like systems that are complicated and work together to build new stuff. And it's really weird. Like there's a story with Dwarf Fortress where you could spill alcohol on the ground. Like your dwarves would drink, they'd throw their cups around because they're just dirty motherfuckers. And um, cats would step in the alcohol and get it on their paws. And then they'd lick themselves clean. And there was a math bug where every time they would lick their paws, it would consume one mug of ale instead of just a tiny fractional amount. So the cats started dying of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> and the reason they found this out is because somebody had a bug report and they said, hey, here's my save file. What the hell is going on? My tavern is full of fucking dead cats. <laughs> <laughs> what's up and the guy's like oh shit oh no they yeah, all got the tanked and died yeah exactly <laughs> which is really really cool sir. yeah which is really really cool so uh dwarf fortress has got a lot of these like weird systems that combine and make totally new stuff and everything works in weird and interesting ways um and what's really cool about the world generation is because it is randomly generated you're getting a new game every time which all right whatever but what it does is it actually sets history into motion. Um, so you will start your game 250 years after, like, the first intelligent creatures are around. So there will be, like, legends and tales of beasts and heroes and villains. And, like, you get an entire world history. And if you turn on an option, you can just read fucking all of it. 
and it's not badly written. It's actually fairly interesting. So you can see like the progression of one single hero throughout history, and maybe maybe you'll find his house one day, and maybe you'll you'll figure out you know where his clan lives and go join them. And it's really really interesting. Um, the downside of Dwarf Fortress is it is incredibly complex. Uh, like we're talking five to six hours of YouTube tutorials to even begin to get a handle on the game. And mm. even then you're still, you're still a beginner. Like it's one well, of these. Yeah. There's different perspectives to play too, like different GUI perspectives that I saw and like the simulation based shit. And it's just intense how much stuff yeah. there is there. It is, it's quite literally the, the most emphasis on gameplay to the detriment of everything else that I've seen. So the graphics are quite literally just ASCII. It is a terminal game. It runs in a terminal. Um, there is no sound. There's no nothing. It is straight gameplay. That's all you get. Now, there are other things that you can add, like community-made mods and stuff like that, to add in music and sound effects and little helpers and graphics and stuff like that. But it's still not, uh, it's not easy to get started. Now, it's so far... It's a really impressive game. Sadly, it's like a second job if I want to try to get good at this. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to play Dwarf Fortress anymore. Ain't but nobody I did got time for that. Trying it. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, though, if if all you want is to like understand that lore and the world building and stuff like that, there are entire like groups of people in this game that take other people's save games and write like history and epics and plot lines and stories about the stuff that has happened in some of these people's save games. Uh, so it's really cool. Like you, there's an entire like content creation group of people just sitting there and writing about what happens in the simulation. That's pretty fucking cool. It's really, really neat. And uh, Dave calls out they are adding graphics to the game. Eventually. Yes. So uh, that is part of the Steam release. So they announced this. Um, I want to say we talked about it last year sometime. But yeah. uh, they are, you know, adding a Steam release. They're going to make things a little bit more user-friendly, adding graphics. And I really hope it turns out well. I've had it on my wish list forever. Um, it's kind of in a, uh, you know, it'll be done when it's done status. So we'll see. Um, well, it's just like two or three dudes, isn't it? Uh, like it's super small scale. For the for the actual game, it is just two people. It's two brothers. Two brothers. Two brothers. One game. <laughs> um, oh, but I, I think the the mod team, um, or the, the people doing the Steam release, has a few more people on it. I don't think it's a massive number. Like, it's not a dev house or anything. Um, yeah. But there is some more help going into it. Hmm. That'll be good. But yeah, it was, it was fun. It's absolutely ridiculous um was it fun I, though <laughs> you used to say that but was it i did enjoy my time with it um like it's if you're bad at sim city it's that level of fun like ah fuck this thing happened what the fuck oh it's because i'm bad at my job okay like it's that kind of fun you know is it is it typical incredible gameplay that has you on the edge of your seat no it's it's just a fun way to watch systems interact it's quite literally when when your city in sim city falls apart that's the kind of fun dwarf fortress is okay yeah i was the sadistic kid that would like start spamming natural disasters just to see what would happen to the city yeah absolutely it's so fun just to watch it burn it uh, what's there, cool but... is that um when oh wow dave has never played it is I would like to see City or Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress, I think. I would like to see Dave play some Dwarf Fortress. Um, completely lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah, but believe it or not, the world itself is persistent. So, if your fortress does fall apart, if all your dwarves die, if if you you know leave this mortal coil and there's nothing else, <laughs> you can start a new game in the same world. So if you find your old fortress, you can just inhabit it. You can just go fucking oh, move cool. in. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's really neat. So it's a completely persistent world, and you can have multiple of them. When you generate a world, it honestly, it takes probably about 15 minutes to complete because it goes through, like, actual people and historical scenarios and figures and events, and it's 
quite literally building 250 years of timeline for you to even get started with the game. Uh, so that's on the initial. Let's say your dwarves die and you start anew. Does it take 15 minutes for it to add more lore on top of what was already there? Or does it just I, put you right back in? I think it just puts you right back in. But uh, with the rest of Dwarf Fortress, I wouldn't be surprised at all if you could hit like the play button on the world map and just have the history go before you start playing. So I'm pretty that... sure you get that option. Nice. Okay. Oh, wake redeemed. Hydrate, everybody. Hydrate. All right. Which I'm running out of stuff to hydrate with. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there too, actually. Which is a good thing, everybody. All Stay right. hydrated out there. There we go. I hydrated. I got the save. Doing okay. Nice. I, I am not. I, I, <laughs> Shit. I God damn it. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> DLS. I knew he'd do something like that. You what up? DLS is the DLS. community troll for sure. 60k worth of hydrate. God damn. Right, okay, gonna, you know what? Okay. Fuck off, DLS. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> here, here. That's what I got. That's what you get. Fuck you. I hydrated. We're good. Dear God. Is he literally anyway. spending all of it? Drown me, fucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that okay that was good. For those of you good. listening, d is trying to drown us with a um, bit redemption. Yes. Uh, Roxer says well. Tabasco. Tabasco oh. is solid. Now, it's not my favorite hot sauce, but the world would be a worse place if it wasn't a Okay, if you're going to do, like, you have to have it in your fridge, it's just like a fallback. You going Tabasco or are you going Frank's? Frank's. Um, but, okay, to be real, it depends on what I'm eating. Because Frank's is good on some things and not good on others. It's like, I think Mexican food and Frank's doesn't mix too well, and I would opt for Tabasco. But for, like, if I'm making a buffalo sauce, it's Frank's all the way. You can't make a buffalo sauce with Tabasco. Oh, yeah, you can. But um, I, mean, can. <laughs> I bet you could. <laughs> I wouldn't. Have you guys, uh, or are you guys hot sauce on pizza kind of guys? Sometimes. Oh, man. I, Frank's is perfect for that. Like, you get a uh, cheap ass DiGiorno, throw it in the oven, take it out, cut it up. Man, you just douse that shit with Frank's. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, man. You got to try, um, it's called Secret Aardvark. Oh. It's, it's really, really good on pizza because it's got sort of a tomatoey flavor to it. Okay. Cool. But it's also got like kind of Caribbean-ish spices. It's I don't know. It's really really good on basically huh. everything. It's What'd a good sauce. Like? Secret Aardvark. That okay. I'm gonna have to check that out. And uh, Delias is in on the uh, Frank's on cold pizza. Is uh, the way to go. And yes, I'm honestly some there's something so nice about a cold food that has a spicy bite. I love yeah. cold spicy food. Like leftover wings or something in the morning. Oh yeah. I won't even heat them up sometimes. Just cold hot wings. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a fat ass um kind of moment for me, but I won't let there be leftover wings. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't that ordered enough wings, sir. <laughs> that is respectable. I won't like, let there I'll be leftover 16, wings. <laughs> I'll have 16 wings. I'll be full at 11. I'm like, fuck it. There's just five more. And I'll just eat them. Well, I mean, it's it's wings, right? It's not like it's not like you're looking at like half of a steak or something. They're so yeah. tiny. Yeah. I, you, you, you basically got to finish it at that point. It's like the popcorn I have a of thing meats. Where I, I yeah. like to clean my plates. Like as a kid, I I've always too. told that. And now it's if it's on my plate, I'm fucking eating it. I'm kind of that way, too. I'm which is, which also out. which also coincides with my problem of loading down the plate too much. Eli's orange juice hot sauce. That would be sounds fantastic. Be like orange chicken. And, uh, you guys got rid of I've... buffalo chips. What? I, I missed that. I cannot hate on B Dubs because we have a contract to hate on Wing Zone exclusively. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Or not, not wings on. I'm sorry, wing stop. Wing, wing stop. stop. That said, buffalo chips were great, especially if you get them with the cheese on them. That shit was good. No, that but uh, good. Buffalo Wild Wings did bring back the. They're doing like buy one get one orders of wings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
So Tuesdays all, all is traditional the, and, and Thursdays is boneless, I think. Yeah, since they don't do 35 cent nights anymore. Yeah. Man, I miss that, the cheap wing nights. Yeah. I remember going to Frickers on Tuesdays. It was half off appetizers by the time we got there. It was like 35 cent wing night and it was $2 course. So like I'd have a thing of nachos, a dozen wings and a beer for like six bucks. Damn. It was fucking great. Ah. So uh, let's see, what so, else did I play? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I I didn't play it yet, but I bought The Outer Wilds because it released on Steam. Oh, right. Oh, it is? But, yeah, yep. it just released on Steam recently, and it's discounted. Yep. It was only like 16 bucks. Hold on. Outer Wilds is the fun ex- exploration time loop, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. yes. Not okay. The Outer Worlds. That's the one I want. That's but the one I want. Outer Worlds <laughs> is like your Fallout-esque yeah. kind of RPG thing. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's a fine game. I want it's The Outer Fallout in space. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Tom, I feel like I've been. I feel like every new game I've played lately is after you already played it. Like, <laughs> like it was the Outer Worlds at first. I got the Xbox Game Pass and played the Outer Worlds after you talked about it on a few casts. And then, um, what was after that? Um, I guess The Witcher Three because you bought it for me, and I played that. And then, then you got Control like a week before I was gonna get it, so I got that after you. And then now, now the Outer Wilds. So I'll just con- well, I'll just continue uh, following your your major games and get uh, get ready to do that again because I don't think you're gonna pass up The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, I started last night. Nice. I am gonna pass up on it though because I don't have a PS4 and I'm not gonna okay. buy one just for. But I am probably gonna watch one of those like no commentary playthroughs. I'll probably yeah. do that instead. Well, and also you have the benefit of once the five comes out. You might be able to get a hold of one dirt cheap. Or honestly, if we end up getting a five, I might ship you our four. That way, if you wanted to run through some stuff, you could. Nice. Appreciate but, that. Yeah. Um, what's two like, Tom? Yeah. How, how far into it are you? Uh, I'm probably about mm, four hours because I started, I literally started it last night. Um, okay. I did stream it if anybody wanted to catch those VODs. Um, and I, I will say that. It is goddamn gorgeous. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just like The Last of Us, Naughty Dog has absolutely excelled in character animations, facial animations, even like everything outside of a cutscene is beautiful. Mm-hmm. The whole game is just gorgeous, bar none. Um, the thing that I was worried about, like the trailers really got me worried about kind of this. B movie sort of look it's hyper violence blood and guts everywhere body horror and stuff like that that didn't happen um at least it hasn't Not yet. happened um now the game is extremely violent yeah. um well the first I, one was too no no it wasn't it was no, violent. It wasn't. nope not even a little bit. The, the fact that this, the fact that two is two. more, the fact that two is more violent doesn't mean that the first one wasn't violent. Thank you. I was <laughs> going to say that, Adam. <laughs> That's not how logic works. I get what you're saying. You, I get what you're saying in the effect of what you're saying. But if, the if last of are, us one was quite brutal, like the way they did the animations. Them, if you are comparing them, this thing, like if the last of us was on the violent scale. Um, it last of us two makes the last of us one look like mario fucking odyssey <laughs> um so no the the first last of us if we're going on like a complete scale with all the games nah it's like last of us one probably a little bit worse than than mario odyssey last of us two kind of tips those scales um <laughs> what i was afraid of is that it would just be violence for the sake of violence very b horror movie sort of thing and it's not it's not Whenever something truly brutal happens, it is tonally and emotionally relevant. It yeah. fits the story. It fits the, you know, exactly what's going on. It fits the music. Everything that it does, it's not, it doesn't feel schlocky for the sake of schlock, mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense, right? It does fit what's going on. Well, I mean, it's that a post, said, post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, scenario with basically zombies. I mean, there's yeah, going to be a lot of violence regardless. There there have been plenty of games like that, but they don't have, like, they have the emotional range of a wet potato. 
right? Where, <laughs> yeah. where yeah. it's just like, oh, look, mean. we took this guy's head off, and it's, it's, we just did it. He's dead. Like, it's quite literally comparing, I don't know, like, I'm trying to even think of the, the game that got kicked off of Steam for just being horrible um, and ultra violent and then what's about school shootings oh, and shit. Uh... What was it? Yeah, I don't remember what yeah, the name forget, of the game was. I forget what it was called. But that, like, I was afraid The Last of Us 2 was going to hit that sort of area. Oh, it didn't okay. Yeah. At all. And well, just so you know, for podcast listeners, I'm not going into any story details whatsoever. It's going to be spoiler free completely. So, I mean, you need the, the balance for the violent sections to be important like you need the contrast there which is i think why why i brought up that the first game is so brutal it's not that there's like constant violence i mean there is kind of but it's not that it's just overtly violent but i mean the way that they execute the parts that are violent are very impactful because yeah you've also got this you know emotionally touching and tragic story going on at the, in the background too mm-hmm. um but it was everything to like Everything from just the animations themselves to the sounds and the way they hit and the fact that when something really brutal is about to happen, they don't show you all of it. They show you just enough to let your imagination, you know, fill in the blanks. Now, that is something that is entirely different between The Last of Us 1 and 2, because Uh The Last of Us 1 did do kind of that. We are going to imply certain amounts of violence without directly showing it. The Last of Us 2 just said, nah, dog, look at this guy. Like his face (laughs) is half hanging off. Nice. You like that? You like that? Yeah. Well, guess what? Here's another one. And then it gets worse. <laughs> um, and it, it like, it zooms in. It, it does. It is extremely violent and not, not at all as I, I will say tastefully executed as the first game, but it doesn't feel like B horror movie levels of schlock. It kind of hits that balance. But um, when it's an M rated game, yeah, yeah, it's it's deep far into M territory. Um, so, the things I don't like about it, um, with the exception of, like, one new mechanic that I've seen so far, and again, I'm four hours in, the gameplay is just The Last of Us 1. Okay. That's it. Which I, I thought the gameplay was good in the first one. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's, that's, that's it's, not, it's not really a criticism. It's more of a... If you're expecting this game to do super new and interesting things on a gameplay front, don't. It is The Last of Us 1. That's it. There is there is very little innovation happening there, which is fine because The Last of Us 1 was super solid by yeah. um, it The story has got, you know, nice quiet moments, again, not getting into details, nice quiet moments, emotional stuff, cringy, awkward stuff with characters interacting. You're just like, oh, Jesus, can you can you not? Can you, no. Huh. You mean like cringy is in like realistic cringe or cringy yeah, exactly. is in like... Okay, okay. Not, not as camp cringe. Like the characters are doing things that are cringy and it is so well written. It's like, it's like an episode of The Office, basically. Like when Michael Scott does something so horrifyingly cringy that you just gotta look away from the TV. It's <laughs> yeah. like that sometimes. It's great. The, the writing is nice that way. Um... But I don't know if I'm actually going to play more of this right now. Um, I will be playing through the entire game eventually. I don't think this is a year. I mean, Naughty Dog, read the room, guys. Uh. <laughs> this, <laughs> the, the game is, is heavy. And it's yeah. not like... It's not like heavy, like, oh, wow, this is neat. And, oh, wow, there's an emotionally impactful moment. Like, every single second of that game is just, you're, it's not fun. You're not it's having a-, a good time. It is designed <laughs> to be a bad time. And you know what? They pull it off perfectly. But this is not the year, Naughty it's Dog. Not, it's not good marketing. <laughs> it's well, designed to be a bad room. time. But I get what you're saying. And they're in a It's a brutal, I mean. heavy game. No, I, I, they, they did exactly what they set out to do. Again, four hours in. So far, they've done exactly what they set out to do. They show the, the brutality of the world and how things are just awful. And yeah, great. Awesome. Um, not, not what I need in you know, pre-apocalypse 2020. <laughs> I don't really need a post-apocalypse 2021. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's fine. Um Yo, do I do I kind of regret buying it? Yeah, because I'm I'm not gonna play it for the next three months, most likely. Uh, it's just 
You need something a little more cheery. Yeah, a little more exactly. Upbeat. Get like, you some Katamari. Like, yeah, play some Katamari in between sessions of The Last of Us. Your first time watching Breaking Bad, right? Like, think about what was happening in your life, and it generally, hopefully, balanced out with, like, the depravity that was Breaking Bad. Now, I'm, that's not a bad thing about Breaking Bad. It's amazing. It's excellent. It's one of my favorite TV series of all time. But it is heavy. <laughs> it's dark. It's dark and heavy and... Yeah. yeah, but, like, you usually have stuff going on in your life that kind of balances that out, right? With yeah. 2020 at this kind of low point, I can't, I literally cannot play The Last of Us right now. It is too much. It is just too much. If they would have delayed this till next year, it would have been okay by me. I will be getting that soon as I get home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I figured you would. Difference in personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is unaffected by everything. It, it's just, uh, it's, it's a bit heavy. Um, I would like to play more of it, but it's just not the time. No, it would... is time for finishing Horizon Zero Dawn, then. Yeah, you got a second one to look forward to. That's an story. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, you, I you guess I haven't finished the, that. You weren't here on the cast that we talked about, um, or that we talked about the PS5 reveal stuff. Nope. <clears throat> I saw, but Did wasn't you on. Did you light up in excitement when you saw that there was a sequel coming? Oh, God. Well, I mean, yeah, I knew. Or did you like, kind of knew? The end, from the ending of the first, you knew. Okay. And from the ending of the first, I was a little upset because of it, but we'll see how they make it. Because it was kind of like shoehorned in the way they ended the first that there will be a sequel. Like, there was no mystery, no will they. It's when's it coming out. Soon as yeah. you beat the first one. Yeah. Which okay. is depressing. Let a good <laughs> thing be. Yeah. Everything doesn't need to be a series, a franchise. Uh, yeah, I get that. But I don't. Let a good thing I, fucking die good. Yeah. I see that to an extent, but also the another sequel or something existing doesn't diminish how good the first one was at all. Ever, I don't think. Uh, it can. Like, like, like you like don't. The, it's hard to isolate. Are, uh, I don't know because. I have I have played had the first one before the second one came out. I mean, how would how would that change your perception of the first one? When when there's something that's extremely story story based, I have actually had sequels ruin that for me because they retcon or change something or added subtext where something was great or a mystery. The second one completely fucking ruined. Like try to make sense of the story of Resident Evil, right? If you look at just the first game, cool, neat, tight little package. You it's done right? Tie off with a bow, it's done. And then over the entire length of the series, it's just become this convoluted ball of shit. <laughs> yeah, but the and first one is still a, a singular if, if story separate, with what you said the first, yeah. Okay, you have so to separate, separate them in your mind. Them. Yeah, exactly. Here, if you can do that. Here's the biggest thing for me. I say Halo was awesome. All of a sudden, here come all the qualifiers. If you need qualifiers, they fuck the series. Yeah. Halo is awesome as long as you never play Halo yeah, 5. Yeah, as a, as a whole series. If you're judging it by the whole series, of course the sequels being bad is going to ruin the whole thing. Well, but And that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I like a tight, like, it was done. Let it be done. Don't bury it. Don't dig it in a hole. Yeah. Like, let Horizon Zero Dawn be a one-off, great story, great background. But that, that's kind of what I was. I mean, at. I kind of felt that, The Last of Us was in that range, but yes, I'm still excited to to watch. I guess the, the so, second one. There is one thing that I want to mention. Naughty Dog for people for reviewers who got review copies, quite literally put them under NDA and said you are not allowed to talk about the back half. Now, what happens there? I haven't been exposed to any leaks. I don't. I have no idea what happens back there, but. It doesn't fill me with uh, with great fuzzy feelings about what happens in the last half. Of the game. If you are prevented from reviewing or looking at the back half of the game when you're putting out your review, uh, it's not it, great. they could be worried of any form of content leak that could ruin the story. Yeah, and yeah. I, I get that. That's, yeah. that's a totally, totally valid reason. But they could have, there's a way to do that without putting authors under NDA and saying, hey, you cannot say anything about the back half of this game, including gameplay, like nothing. You could say, hey, you're under NDA for these story particulars. 
and then give people the ability to say, hey, you know, I hated at, you know, halfway through the game, this thing happened and Barney the Dinosaur came out and he was a zombie. <laughs> like, what the fuck, Naughty Dog? What are you even doing? I mean, I'm... it's it's a lot easier to just say, hey, second half, don't talk about it. Yeah, I get that it's easy, but that's not that's not how things should work. And putting NDAs on on journalists is never never really a great sign. I don't think it's necessarily bad. Like NDAs on journalists are commonplace in all video game reviews. All of them. Like there's periods in which they're not allowed to say shit. Yeah. So I mean that that's commonplace in the review. Embargoes are. NDAs yeah. are not. I mean, an embargo is effectively, effectively an NDA that's yeah. time based, right? But it's not. It's not a content NDA. Is is what I'm really getting right? It's it's you can't say this thing before everybody else has a chance. Cool, I get that, right? You you avoid you avoid the person like booting up the game, looking at the title screen, and then giving it a, a zero out of ten because you know Joel wasn't wearing an inflatable T Rex costume or something like <laughs> that, right? Um, but content is something entirely different but i mean they still are giving their overall ratings so i mean here's the thing you haven't been there i haven't been there they may have something groundbreaking there that they're worried of anything coming out anything because it could be something that's just completely night and day changes the fucking game i mean it wouldn't be too different like last of us won right there halfway i'm spoilers yeah um winter fucking... winter yes winter like that would yeah, have been winter was very different Had something came out in reviews and was kind of hinted at something like that happened that would have really ruined the moment the impact yeah it would have removed yeah completely so metal gear solid 2 <laughs> uh, although <yeah. laughs> but then uh, again if you if okay so that's actually a perfect that's a example. good example of what you're talking let's, about i know yeah let's because say everybody's konami, like what is this <laughs> let's say konami allows reviewers to talk about the first hour or two of the game and nothing else and then you buy it and you play as fuckboy Raiden the entire time. Like, <laughs> I don't hate Raiden, I, but the, I did hate him in the past. But if you bought the game on the premise that I'm going to be Solid Snake for, you know, 20 to 40 hours. Yeah. And then you got fuckboy Raiden. You're pissed. <laughs> and nobody was able but, to tell you about it because they put handcuffs on journal. But here's but the they thing. Also, the, they the are fact allowed to that they the game still. Like they're the, allowed to give it a rating. Mm -hmm. I think even in that aspect... I mean, I guess you could say that having to play as that character is a negative, but that was still probably the intended feeling you're supposed to have. You're supposed to think you're going to be Snake all the time, and then all of a sudden you play as this other character, and you have to deal with that. Like, Yeah, no, I, I, get, I get the purpose. It's just when it comes to setting expectations in reviews, because that's all reviews are, right? They set expectations, and they allow people to get kind of a basically an extended preview and criticism before they drop 60 bucks on something. If you prevent that from being everything it could and should be, you're doing a disservice to the people who are reviewing and relying on those reviews. I, I don't agree. It's like, okay I, to be wrong. <laughs> I don't. Why does everything need to be spelled out for people? Yeah, because I mean, people that, that, are idiots. Like, let then let them hate the ambiguous. game when they get to that part. <laughs> they deserve it. <laughs> And I mean, if you're really worried and you're really wondering, just wait. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Like, if you're someone rushing out the door to get it, you probably don't care what the fucking review is anyway. Right. And that's that's the other thing is that uh, there's actually a big a big video by a former IGN writer which said, hey, believe it or not, what you hear about reviews, like most of the stuff that the community says, like they're bought off or they're paid off or whatever, completely false. Also, reviews don't actually impact game sales all that much. Mm -hmm. Like it's less, it's literally less than 10% of reviews making a purchasing decision. Marketing has the biggest impact on a game sales. I wonder, I wonder how much um, reading reviews influences the actual perception of the game by the person. Like are, are, if people read just a bunch of negative reviews about a game and then play it, they're going to be way more likely to dislike it, even if they maybe would have loved it if they didn't read any reviews. And on, yeah, on the flip side, there's also the fact that there's a lot of games out there that are hugely hyped up before they even come out. Mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild, Last of Us 2. 
So I'm, I'm picking on something that I wasn't excited about and then picking on something that I was excited about. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of reviewers jump on this hype train and everyone's throwing around 10 out of 10, right? Yeah. Um, and it's it's not. Like, Breath of the Wild you're is disappointed a great by game. The time you it play is it. not. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's nowhere near perfect. <laughs> it's got a whole lot of fucking issues. Looking at you, we <laughs> weapon durability. Um, right? Every six uh, swings, your sword breaks. All right, that kind of fucking sucks. Um, but nobody mentioned it. And they're 10 out of 10 perfect reviews. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I think The Last of Us had a lot of those problems with these reviews where um, it's, it's really less reviews and more hype train. Um, but we'll see. And I, so far, I, the game's fine. D Dave calls out, I could care less about reviews. If I want a game, I'm going to get it. And if it sucks, then it sucks and vice versa. And I like that. I like that attitude when it comes to it. And conversely, d is pointing out No Man's Sky, the perfect game where the hype was there and then everyone was willing to say, yeah, this is not what we wanted. Agreed. And Mass Effect Andromeda as well. Believe it or not, people were fucking hyped for Mass Effect Andromeda and it was a shit show. Yeah. But I just, on this Last of Us, I can't, I, I can't qualify it because I haven't played it. Mm. But the fact that it is getting a two-star rating right now and a lot of stuff I'm seeing with probably 80% of the reviews being one, I can't help but think it's pissed off people, not at the game, but a shit not related to the game and just bombing the review. Mm. Yeah, I, I it happens. User reviews, like, this is not a zero out of 10 game. The Last of Us 2 is not a zero out of 10 game. I've only played four hours, and I can tell you already, it's not. Like, let's say the story is an absolute fucking trash fire, and the events of the game are horrifying and evil in indescribable ways. The gameplay is still really solid. It is quite literally a, a copy-paste, slightly better polished version of The Last of Us 1, which was already great. Yeah. Like it's, there is no way it's a 0 out of 10. 5 out of 10, sure, you can make that argument to me, but 0? Come on, guys. Yeah. If you wanted Last of Us 1, but again, that's what you're getting here. <laughs> I think it's a little too depressing for 2020, but, you know, that's just me, and that's why I'm probably not going to play it until, you know, six months later. And that's fine. So, um, Dave calls out, uh, when Andromeda came out, he was super pissed. He said, I couldn't even call it dog shit, because dog shit looks better than that thing came out. <laughs> yeah, that, that which, was... Again, which is why I like to rely on reviews for a lot of things, because I said, ah, Mass Effect Andromeda, this should be good. But then again, EA... Let's hold for a minute, and then all the reviews came out, and I saved myself sixty bucks. Maybe the initial you reviews. Were maybe bad you would have liked though. it if you played yeah. it. Uh, no, no, nah, because I, I watched all all the gameplay and stuff to see what they were doing with the story. Mm -hmm. I would have hated it. That's fair. And you never know; maybe they can get back. But all the Andromeda, if I remember right, EA was in a clusterfuck, and they were throwing teams around because <laughs> oh. of Anthem, Andromeda, and Dragon yeah. Age. There is no way that game could have turned out. Not in that environment. They had too many big titles trying to come out, and they were floating people rather than having dedicated staffs, which is yeah. not a good way to go about those kind of things. DDS, have you guys heard of Star Wars Squadrons? No. We yes. actually have a news story coming up about that. So we will be talking. Actually, fuck it. You want to just talk. hit it now? Yeah. Let's yeah. just talk. Segway. So so, uh, EA announced that there is a new kind of like Rogue Squadron. So space shooter, uh, you know, flying around cool Star Wars spaceships, blowing stuff up. A new one of those games coming out. Uh, it's got a single player campaign. It has no microtransactions. Um, it, so far, they're saying all the right things. Now, again, this is EA. This is also Star Wars. Um, now, the last Star Wars single player game they put out was really well received. Um, I have hopes, but I'm going to wait for the reviews on this one because we have to. It's EA. Um, the other thing that I really am excited for is that uh, this does have full HOTUS support. So That's joystick, rad. joystick and throttle. And I believe it might have VR. I need to look again, but it might have VR support. If it does, this is a really easy purchase for me. If I can get inside of a goddamn X-Wing... <laughs> Use my flight stick and my throttle and blow shit up in VR. Yeah, there's nothing nothing much I need in life other than that. I remember Tom and I at a Dave and Buster's probably spending twenty dollars a piece playing the fucking <laughs> yeah. Star Wars co op uh, fighter jet game. Nice. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know what I butchered it, but yeah, that was a fucking blast. I couldn't imagine what this would be in VR. And 
they're doing this in kind of vein of like spiritual successor to Rogue Squadron, which yeah. was super, super popular. Uh, Rogue Squadron was one of my favorite games on the 60s. I mean, it was a huge successful, hugely popular. So, I mean, if they follow that up properly, man, woof, this could be and really good. DD calls out, it's got a 5v5 mode, right? I believe so. Um, again, I caught the cliff notes on this, but I do believe it does have 5v5 multiplayer. Yeah, this could be really neat. This could be really fucking neat. What I really hope for is something that the original Rogue Squadron had. Think. I could be misremembering things. It's been a while. Um, but I really hope that they've got co-op. Because I would love yes. for Urk and I, light sticks, VR setup, in-game comms, co-op blowing up the Death Star. That's what I want. That would be fucking rad. That would just be insane. I'd sign me the fuck up. $60 out of my wallet right away. Let's go. But it seems like EA has kind of made... I, they learned a lesson after the outrage of Battlefront 2? Um, I don't think... <laughs> I, I would, would hope not, so, but I wouldn't have faith in it. <laughs> do, not, do not call it learning a lesson, because that is that is not what happened. What happened is that Disney looked at the reviews and said, guys, we gave you this license. We can change all that. And uh, you don't piss off the mouse. <laughs> you, you, you just don't. You don't piss off the mouse. Mickey is not pleased. No. Nah. We're going to need you to People fix that. about Hillary. So, Mickey EA, should make potties disappear. I, I wouldn't say that, um, that EA learned a lesson. I would say that they had to, or cor uh, corporate governance would uh, cause them some issues. Either way, I'm really, really hopeful on this. This could be really, really fucking sweet. I'm excited. I let's, shouldn't be excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Tom, was the last time you've been excited about an EA game? And go. Oh, whew. Titanfall. Titanfall 2. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that, that was a pretty good launch. Yeah. Yeah, Titanfall 2 is 100% solid. So, I mean, we, we give them a lot of shit, but every once in a while, there's something that still comes out good for me. Yeah. Even a broken so, clock is wrong twice a day, right? Um, I, Your spirit is right, but you said that 100% wrong, my friend. Wow. It's wrong a whole lot of times a day. <laughs> It's right twice today. Or yeah, that one. Sorry, I was I was testing you guys. Yeah, 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 I get you. But anyway, games. Adam, games. You, you playing more control. I did play some more control. Um, I got a levitate ability, which is super cool, and then I got the absolutely necessary upgrade to that levitation ability, which is like the force stomp thing. So that's pretty, that's pretty satisfying. Oh, if we could like levitate and then just like destroy fuckers underneath you. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, it's, uh, all the abilities in that game are really, really fun. I will, I mean, I'll never get sick of picking something up and just like yeeting it at everybody. And just the, <laughs> between the sounds and like the physics and, and the animations, it is just like, it's, it's so satisfying to just launch something at somebody. <laughs> It's like, get out of here. It's good. It's really good. And it's one of those things, too, like, you can you can grab an object and then, you know, throw it from where you're standing. But if you grab an object that's, like, behind somebody and then launch it before it gets to you, you it'll, like, come at them from that direction instead. So you can, like, sometimes get multiple enemies that way and stuff, too. It's just, it's just cool. The controls in that game, I think, are really good. Everything feels nice to play. I, I really miss yeah. <laughs> first-person shooters that feel fast to like Max Payne always felt really quick in gun. Yeah. Control has that same feeling. Control is quick. If you don't if you're not running around during the fight or behind something the whole time, you will die. You have to keep moving. For sure. Move or die. Move or die. It says so in the option screen too. Or not the, the loading screens. Oh really? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll yeah, like every game does with the little tips at the bottom. It'll be like, oh, hey, okay. uh, move around. If you stand still, you're you're gonna die. It's like okay, yeah, get used to hitting that shift key. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I'm looking at the game list, fellas. Do we really have anything? Beat else? Saber is still amazing. Oh, I'm yeah. going through my my Half Life Alex for the third time. Um, I am no longer streaming Beat Saber on Twitch because. It's kind of dangerous to do DMCA. so. DMCA. 
That's really yeah. sad. I, that was so cool watching you do Beat Saber streams. Uh, well, you can because you can actually click the little Discord link down below hey. if you're not already a part of our Discord. Hey, hey. All of my Beat Saber streams have moved from Twitch into Discord, so you can watch it there. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, there's no VODs, no replays, no anything like that. It's just point-in-time stream. But if you want to catch me playing Beat Saber, if you want to make me play certain songs, I am doing so there because Twitch and DMCA has made it kind of kind of dangerous to do that. And honestly, it's not worth the 72-pin connector account if, uh, if we get banned due to me dancing. Well, what you could always do is do it on your personal, and then we'll just host your personal. Yeah, but nobody does that with thing. Like, no one watches that shit. <laughs> yeah yeah no. anyway yeah i'm excited to get back because that's something else where you've been doing a lot of vr it's mm. like man i kind of want to start maybe doing a little more beat saber i don't know what what you should do is half-life alex so i'm going through for my third time it is still <laughs> metric fuck tons of fun and guys i have got a pro gamer move to tell you about now this is in plays of the day right now hint hint arc hint um, sorry what <laughs> hint what um plays of the so, day Tom's yeah, in it. there were yeah there there was a uh, a man hack and a man hacker like these flying buzz saws basically that come at you and try to fuck you up so i missed my shots it flew past me and uh hit the inside of an open trunk of a car so it's just sitting there i reach over grab the lid of the trunk slam it down and trap the motherfucker inside the car it was amazing what? it was fucking amazing <laughs> it was just this hatchback it was wide open the thing flew and i'm just like oh shit oh shit boom got him it worked i trapped him in the car it was magical alex That's has fantastic. a lot of those system environment working things where god i hope more companies take note of that I know it was so weird because I it's like I saw it and I'm like this can't work right this this shouldn't work right holy fuck it worked <laughs> yes that's that exact situation is something I noticed about about watching you play it it's the game where like in every other game you try little stuff like that fully mm. expecting it not to work and it usually doesn't yeah but in Half Life Alex it seems that a lot of those things actually do work you can put something on top of your head. Uh, and, and it'll yeah. stay there. You can put bottles inside of a container and carry that container around, and it actually works properly. Uh, little stuff like that, and and obviously the the enemy hatchback thing. Good to know. What's what's great, and that actually just like we saw in the Half Life Alex trailers, where somebody opened a car door to block gunfire mm -hmm. when an enemy was attacking them. Shit like that works, and this isn't by accident. Valve actually wants you to do stuff like that. They released soon after Half-Life Alex launched. They figured out, oh shit, people are putting like health stuff and grenades inside of buckets and carrying them around. And our physics system sometimes bugs out and drops stuff. Uh -huh. So they actually released a patch just for those contained items to work properly. They want you to play the game in the way you want it to work. And mm -hmm. if it should work that way, they're going to uh they're absolutely going to support you. Yeah, Which that's... is really neat. What sucks is Valve has interest in two ways, twofold, to make a game that's super immersive like that. One, because anyone with a VR headset's going to want that game because mm -hmm. it is the optimal environment to be in. But also because that's going to help sell headsets. So they're willing to possibly even take a loss on the game because they know they'll sell more hardware. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to get that kind of buy-in from other developers because they don't have a dual channel of income from it. So what's oh, yeah. interesting is that headsets on Steam are like people, according to the um, hardware survey that Steam does, there are a little over, I want to say a million people with headsets right now. Like Half-Life Alex itself moved a million units of, of the index, which is nuts to fucking think about. Literally $1 billion worth of hardware was sold thanks to one game. Um... Yeah, so but devs have got a pretty decent pool if they wanted to build something. That said, no, no. Half-Life Alex was 300 people over a period of like seven years. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not the buy-in. It's the fact that that game was so good, people bought the hardware. So Valve can lose money on the game because they know they're going to make it back on the hardware. Yeah. Whereas EA making a VR game, 
their only benefit is selling the game. So if it costs more to, than they're going to make on it, why would they do it? Yeah. That said, they might add, uh, you know, VR support for squadrons, which means I will absolutely buy that game. <laughs> you know, like that, that takes it from a, we'll wait and see to uh yeah, I've spent more money on worse VR games. Let's go. Let's just do it. Well, because you had th that Matt Vox or whatever that mech game was, which was really good, just no player base. Yeah. That's the worst when a game is fantastic, but nobody plays it. Yeah. That happens on VR a lot. I bet it does. Yeah, it's a it's graveyard getting, of great games. It's getting more rare, though. I'm sure there are a lot um, of really bad games, too. Oh, my oh God. God. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much fucking shovelware. What's, what's the worst VR game you've ever played? Um, There was... I don't like. I don't want to shit all over this game because it wasn't the fault of the dev. They were trying something; it was an experiment, and it failed. Um, but the game was quite literally a walking simulator in VR, which sounds cool, and I like walking simulators. Um, but the environments moved the player, so moved them like side to side, and had really vertigo-inducing sections, and it was just motion sickness city. Uh, um, and I gotta say, like, I'm not gonna name that game, but that thing was fucking awful. It was only five bucks, but it was bad enough that I would never, never play it again. I had a DOA uh, balloon fighting game where, like, you'd be up in balloons and you'd shoot each other's balloons Mario Kart style, and then when they mm -hmm. had three balloons, they would sink and die. It was a cool premise, but it was dead as soon as I had it installed. That's a shame. Other than that, uh, there was a climbing game that, like Tom said, it was motion sick inducing because mm. it's a free climbing game. The thing about climbing, if you miss, you fall. Falling in <sighs> VR makes you feel like you're falling in real life. <laughs> and that gets you to want to puke real quick. Yeah, I, I can, know I've I talked imagine. about this. I know I've talked about this before. I'm going to bring it up again because it relates directly to the conversation. And I will never pass up an opportunity to shit on Bethesda. <laughs> when they ported Skyrim VR. They kept everything the same, including the introduction to the game <laughs> while you're in the cart, moving sideways. What the yeah, fuck? That, so that, imagine uh, that being your first VR game. You're sitting in the cart, moving sideways the entire oh, time. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and by the way, that's not the worst part. <laughs> the, the thing giants. I was thinking of. Yeah, the giants. <laughs> like when they smack the ground and launch you 27 million miles in the air. Yeah, that shit happens in VR. You're just looking around. You're like, what the fuck? I literally fell over the first time that happened. Close your eyes. Yeah. And wait till you hear the ground on the bottom. So was that, like, is that a bug that just stayed in because everybody liked it? Or is that intentional? Because the first time that happened to me in Skyrim, I thought it was a bug straight up. Yeah. I remember you showing me and we was just laughing our ass off. I'm like, that's got to be a bug. Yeah, no, it's not a bug. Uh, Bethesda took literally the minimum amount of effort that thing to vr which is why it plays as shitty as it does and is unusable on most modern headsets today don't worry that'll be their next release get it to the modern headsets yeah hey jake from state jake. farm subscribes he says bonk hey. bonk <laughs> bonk thank you jake thanks right. so now i'm looking at the list i realized i missed those last two tom you have one more guy on there Oh yeah. Looks like yeah. you had a chill a little chill night sometime. So um after games like Half-Life Alex, where where something is intense, it's stressful, it just like impresses upon you, like you take the headset off and you just you feel the the dirt and the grime of the alien worlds you just encountered. You need something to just chill out and calm down with. So Google Earth VR. Um the like Google Earth is cool just normally but in vr when you're holding your wand it has like a little street view bubble you can stick your face in it and literally just look around places so if you want to check out like castles in in scotland or go walk along the streets of tokyo or see the pyramid anywhere that there's a 3d picture in street view or google maps that you could you could zoom in and look around on you can do that same thing in vr it is really really cool That's dave asked really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Dave asked in chat, have you guys ever played No Man's Sky in VR? Yeah, absolutely. We did, or at least yeah. I did a whole lot of that. Unfortunately, that pretty well? 
it's as broken as No Man's Sky usually is, so it worked okay. <laughs> I remember um, flipping Tom out because he was in VR. He didn't know that I was in his world. I got on a ship and fucking buzzed him. Yeah. While he was in VR. So that was kind of fun to do. Like, just flew over right above him. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? And Eric's just cackling. <laughs> and then I was the asshole and, like, got out and tried to trap him in ground using a terraformer. Because yeah. in VR, I figured that had to be kind of disorienting. It, it was. You're welcome. Uh, I yeah. will say, like, No Man's Sky in VR, it's kind of kind of neat. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's completely unoptimized, but it's kind of neat. It's a decent port. Sure, it's pretty. I mean, it's, it's a port. That's all they did is just port it over. Like, get mm -hmm. it there. So, I mean, yeah, and the game, I, I've been jonesing for it because it is such a chill fucking game. Like, I don't care what anyone says. Like, you just want to chill, relax, and just kind of discover some shit that every once in a while I see something really cool. Yeah, that game's it. To an extent, but there's there's an aspect of the game that it, it kind of takes me out of that in the, uh, hey, you're out of you're out of oxygen, you need to get this thing or you'll die, or a hey, you can't explore this galaxy anymore because you're out of this material that you need to charge your cannon that you need to I charge your launcher. Yeah, if they had I, just like I, a discovery mode where you had unlimited resources and you could just kind of chill out and and explore the galaxy, that would be that would be cool. So um. I got past that by um, just making a fuck ton of cash, and then once you do that, you're good. Yeah, but, but like, yes, yes, <laughs> it get... requires quite a bit of grind first. And yes, it does. If I'm trying to chill out, that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm about. Yeah, I, I, I get you because chilling out on a planet alone, the planet's not really where the cool shit is. I mean, it is, but it's not. Going to multiple planets and seeing the differences in the way that the sun sets mm -hmm. and getting like three different planets in view at the same time with the sun yes. going around. Super fucking cool. <laughs> Bird had some really awesome screenshots he pulled up on there. Mm -hmm. I love all the planets with the red grass. Yeah. Red yes. grass looks so cool. I don't know why. Especially if the fauna actually supports trees. Mm hmm because that that's the other thing i like is like some planets like you'll get some vegetation and then it's just like there can't be trees there's no trees at all or that there's no uh megafauna so there's no like big fucking giant dinosaur looking dudes and then you get a planet that's super lush all the big things that's cool so uh so Eric, when you get back i i'm pretty sure google earth vr is free uh you yeah. should install that and, and just run it. around i've got it um i'll I've done it some, but yeah, I mean, it might be worth a check out. So it's been a little bit. I remember going through uh, mountains. I was actually using it to help plan out a hike. <laughs> like trying crazy. to figure out different ways I can get into different ravines without having to actually summit shit. So that was actually kind of cool. But yeah. Um, so we got some news. Um, and one of the first ones is probably a happier one. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Delayed until the 19th. I say happier in a weird way because they've delayed November, it. November 19th. <laughs> what did I say? December? No, you just said the 19th. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's been November delayed until, until yesterday. But um, they're taking their time. They, they've delayed this game a lot. And I, I, I generally like that, but I don't know what this one's about. But they're not rushing it, which is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time. Like, and I, I say this about every game that gets to take your time, make it good. Uh, you know, me, this is this is like the most stereotypical thing in in gaming like reviews, podcasts, culture. But Miyamoto says a delayed game is eventually good, or can be eventually good. Uh, a rush game is not. So, yeah, take your time. Now, I did see some people on Twitter were being shitheads and saying, fine, I'll just pirate it day one. Fuck you, I canceled my pre-order. Like, all right, dude, you're <laughs> you're getting pissy because they're they're taking their time trying to make this game better instead of shitting out something that you might not be happy with. Like, all right, bub. What? I thought you always supported piracy, Tom. Some people just don't want to be happy. Yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's never enough for some people. I realize I'm saying that. <laughs> Looking in the mirror. Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> oh no, it me. But no, it'll be fun when it gets here. Um. Also, they also confirmed 
they also confirmed that um, if you buy the uh, PS4 version, it'll still be compatible with PS5 when it comes out. And Let's one see. the Series X too, which was yeah. it's a super nice move with them to say you can buy it now and it'll work on the next gen. That being said, if you want, I'm assuming it's if you want like the PS5 build of the game with like the better uh, graphic settings and stuff, you probably have to purchase the game again. I don't know. I didn't look too deep into the details. I'm hoping that's actually what they're talking about, just not backplay. Yeah. This is backwards play. I mean, that's not uh, they did really say on they did call out the term backwards compatibility. Oh, so, but I, you know, we don't know for sure. Yeah, because I can CD see Project to Red has been known to be really nice to consumers and players of their games. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did something really nice, like give them the game. Like yeah. we don't care where you're playing it; you bought the game, mm-hmm. which is actually a nice benefit of a digital outlet. You don't have to lock them into quality settings. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, there was other really good game news yeah, about there another was. release. I am fucking jazz. And um, yeah, we had a little bit of talk in the Discord on this one. Pokemon Snap, baby. That shit's <laughs> back. It it was a a complete throwaway game by Nintendo. Like, here, let's, I don't know, put out this weird thing. We'll capitalize on the hype of the Pokemon franchise. Pokemon Snap ended up being like one of their greatest cult classic hits ever <laughs> released. And people people so fondly remembered that game that they worked tirelessly, and they're still working tirelessly, to make sure that it emulates properly, because it's not exactly an easy game to emulate, which is kind of funny to think about. So I have played two games in my college career where we went and got an N64 just to do something. The first was freshman year. We did 24 hours, 120 star run, like 24 hours straight, like from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. Got 120 stars in Super Mario 64. Really fun. My fourth year of college, we picked up an N64 and a copy of Pokemon Snap and went to fucking town. (laughs) God, that was so much fun. Like, I'm surprised how well that game aged. Yeah. Like, that game still plays well, still feels well. And it's just... I only on. really played a, like a demo of it at the video store when video stores existed. Um, can you describe Pokemon Snap for somebody who hasn't, didn't actually play through it? So yeah. imagine an on-rails first-person shooter, like something like Time Crisis, right? Except instead of shooting things, you're taking pictures of things. Mm-hmm. And the things are Pokemon. And, some, and you've got like two, uh, was it two different items? You've got like an apple, which will attract them, and then like a... Um, Basically, a ball of tear gas, of Pokemon tear gas, <laughs> to irritate them and drive some away. Uh-huh. So you can like get a couple, like by trailing something with an apple, you can get it to move over to next to another Pokemon and like try to get them both in one shot, which will get you a better score. And sometimes, like you can do certain things with certain items to actually make new unique Pokemon appear in the environment. Like it's as much of a little environmental puzzle adventure game as it is a photography. It was like a really the- cool blend. Like an example of something you could do at one point is effectively narc- knock a Charmeleon into a volcano and Charizard comes out. Yeah, oh, that's kind of cool. Or you knock a Magikarp into a waterfall and Gyarados comes. And if I remember right, it was kind of Metroidvania-ish in a way that you didn't have both those other items to start with. You yeah. got them later. So yeah. then what that allowed you to do was go back through your original maps and start being able to discover new things in those by getting this Pokemon to go here, do that, which yeah. is real fun. And then each p- picture was scored based on like what the Pokemon was doing, if it was in frame, all that. So there was a high score element to the game as well by how good of a picture can you take. So okay. there was a whole lot of fun stuff to it. Use picture was too important for a score, though. Yeah. But that, that game was a blast. And then Dave called out, Magic Dave, that there was a Pokemon Snap printer that was at yeah. um, that was at uh, Blockbusters where you can print out your pictures of Pokemon from Pokemon Snap. It was really cool. I did not know this as a kid, and I really wish I would have because that's a really, really cool thing. Yeah, Pokemon Snap 
like for a game that should have been like this shitty little throwaway title, becoming one of the hottest things Nintendo ever put out is just. <laughs> Yeah, I, I expect that to sell really fucking well. Really yeah. well. But since it's going to have nostalgia guys that don't do anything with Pokemon anymore come back. And kids love Pokemon. It's Even just, though they it's won't a, have any idea what they're getting, but they're going to love it. It's a super <laughs> chill game. Mm -hmm. Like everything about Pokemon Snap was just... It was just a chill game. Like there's, there's really no other way to put it. You run around, you're taking pictures of shit. You don't have to try hard. It's cool. You're never in danger. And the thing is, you know they're going to use motion control. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how that part goes. Hopefully they Fucking don't force Nintendo. it. As long as they don't force it. That's the thing that actually made me really fucking hate um, the uh, Pokemon Red and Blue. Uh, like, oh, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee, Eevee for Eevee, the Pikachu, Switch. Yeah. yeah. Like redoing those classic games is that if I wanted to play on the TV, I couldn't just use the fucking controller. I had to waggle to win. Nintendo, I don't like waggling. I've been waggling <laughs> since the Wii days, man. Don't make me waggle. The waggle makes money. Don't He's waggle got bad me, bro. Days. He can't waggle anymore. He's yeah. all waggled out. I oh. served my waggle. And he's back. <laughs> oh, but also speaking of uh, franchises coming back. EA had another announcement. Like there, there was some good shit coming out from them. Skates coming back. Long away. They awaiting. literally said in their announcement, they said, "Hey, Josh, buddy, we hear you. We're gonna make a new skate game. It's coming out just for you." So yeah, that that's gonna be interesting because I know a lot of people really wanted that. And if I remember, Skate XL was what everyone was going to Skater because they XL. wanted yeah. Skater XL. Yeah, because I know Elixir was playing a shit ton of that on stream. Yeah. So did so, they confirm that it's Skate 4? Or did they just say... Because I saw one that just said a new Skate is coming. So I'm hoping it's not like... <laughs> I saw a comment that says that said uh, watch it be a, a mobile port for Skate 3. Oh, God. I think... I Dare I say... Or Skate 3 I on really, the Switch or something. I really hope that EA learned their lesson because when they did that shit with Dungeon Keeper, like, hey... New Dungeon Keeper game coming out. Get hyped. And everyone's like, oh my god, we're hyped. And they said, it's an iPhone game. And like, ah, oh, well, fuck you then. <laughs> what was the That's what was the other one? Was it a was it a Diablo game or something? Uh, no, Command oh, and Diablo? Conquer. Command and Conquer. Well, Diablo got flamed hard because they were teasing an announcement. It was the it one from EA. But it turned yeah. out to be mobile only and people lost their shit. It was the one where you, the footage of the event itself, you could hear the crowd kind of like, uh what <laughs> and then during the q a they had a guy completely rip the dude <laughs> like so they had to bring uh, out a pi or pr guy to actually handle some of the q a it's like when when valve at the international a couple years ago you know put up the valve software logo after the event and i was like oh my god is that happening is half-life happening are we getting a new <laughs> portal is it is it left for dead 3 is it team fortress 3 what the fuck valve is it something new? And it was something brand new. And they said, Artifact. And it's like, oh, what is this? And then underneath it, it says, The Dota card game. And everyone's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> boo. And you can hear the entire stadium just utter this, like, collective sigh of disappointment. It was amazing. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that fanboys can still actually be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking because love Valve, but Tom. Jesus Christ, man, give me more goddamn Half-Life. Every once in a while, they can still be honest. So, yeah, yeah, very, very few and far between. I'll admit that for me. Um, some other news we're going to hit on, and this one's actually, this is going to be the last one, but it's also a really important one to us. Uh, Brawl 10K uh, was today. Yes. And we were in it. We were in it. In it. Um, we made through the qualifiers. We the beat qualifiers. what is effectively Cloud9. Uh, it's not Cloud9 anymore because they dipped out of the whole Rocket League thing for a while. Um. But, but yeah, yes, our uh, our Rocket League team beat what was essentially Cloud9 uh, players, Gimmick, Torment, and Illusion. So I want to call out something for those who didn't see the game. Um, we went up 3-0 in the series. It's best of seven. They came back and won the next three. In game seven, with oh five seconds God. left, uh, Rats Enterprise had the ball, lost it with five seconds left, up a goal, 
we get a last second goal. Zero's on the clock to tie it up. And then Lion gets to go ahead win goal. That was so cool, it was man. A, it there was, was nuts. There was a moment at the end before that zero second goal. The clock was at zero and the players were keeping the ball up. And I was just kind of like, it's over. We lost. Because it didn't it didn't look like it was in a spot where we, we could, you know, viably Yeah, it didn't look like we were off. gonna be able to get possession. Mm -hmm. And then like the ball got really close to the ground, but no just uh, they were just barely there to keep the ball up off the ground. Um for those who don't play Rocket League, once the ball hits the ground at zero seconds, the game is over. So you can actually have a game go indefinitely if the ball never touches the ground but the clock is out. Yeah. Um but yeah. That was that was so cool. One of uh, it's got to be my favorite Rocket League moments of all time. Like <laughs> if that game was nuts. If you have heart problems, if you cannot take stressful situations, please do not watch the series. <laughs> if you can, you owe it to yourself if you're a Rocket League fan to check that out. And it's honestly some of the best Rocket League I have ever seen us or really anyone play. It was it, it was, was super cool amazing. to see. And so it was. It was really, really riveting. And then today was the actual tourney. Mm -hmm. um, we played hard. We played well. But we ended up going out in the first round to Envy. Um, which, mm -hmm. I will call out, went on to win the whole shindig. GG's so, Envy. Yeah, good games, Envy. God damn, well, you well played done. fucking well. And I, I also want to give a big call out to our boy Demo. Because, uh, what is it? Three Star Armada. Sorry, I wasn't familiar with the game. But they qualified as well. So Demo also making it in. Uh, they got knocked out first round by G2. So, yeah, it was nice work. Yeah. Awesome. It, it, it's nice to see him still succeeding and doing really well. So, proud of our boys, though. That was a hell of a showing. And just keep that momentum going. Uh, thanks for Wonder for uh, jumping in on the tourney for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, in case people didn't realize, um, our squad for this tourney was, of course, Lion and Jacob. And then we had Wonder uh, jump in and join us for this tournament. So that was really nice. They seemed to work really well together. I was really happy with it. So. Um, Didi, Didi, Didi is asking, does 7-2 have a game night? Um, I, I think our, our default answer is every night's game night at 72 Big <laughs> Hacker. Um, no matter what you want to play, there's always somebody willing to jump in with you. Um, um, unless it's, you know, awful. We don't have so. officially scheduled game nights. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but I like most depend. nights people are in playing games and then occasionally after like a podcast we'll do Jackbox or something like that yeah. um, every once in a while if you stay in general you'll see me get a spur up my ass or someone like hey after the podcast let's do this it'll normally be Scriblio or Jackbox every once in a while we'll do like a knockout or something like that on uh, Rocket League mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say I want to do it as soon as I get back the next podcast I'm in Washington for because damn it, I haven't had that big veg out just beyond gaming all night with everyone. First time I'm back, fucking doing it. Uh, also, a good call out. Dobby, Dobby does mention that um, if you play too long with Magic Dave, you will end up watching wrestling. I was actually in VR, <laughs> in like OVR on my hand, watching a wrestling stream with Magic Dave. It was. It was the stupidest, most amazing night. Uh, it was. It was fantastic. So. If you want to enjoy all these shenanigans, check out the Discord server, join, find people to play with. We are always looking for more cool people. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for you this week. Unless you guys have something you want to add in there. Uh, stay mm. hydrated. Stay hydrated. Right, well, we finished my tea. Um, if you're on our Twitch, uh, we have our YouTube uh, 72 pin connector. Uh, we try to clip out every week some uh, small segments in case people miss parts that we thought were fun and we'll kind of let people out there to see it. And we also have our past podcasts out there. If you're ever on our YouTube and you're like, hey, they seem to be talking to people all the time. That's because we're actually live on Twitch doing this. So jump over to Twitch at twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector and you can jump in, be part of the conversation, and just, you know, talk to us and, you know, be part of it. Also, we play games live, as you've probably seen. So just go ahead and jump in there and play the game with us. If you say, fuck this, I just want the audio, or that's where you're at already, we do have RSS feeds you can get from our website, 72 pinconnectorcom or we're also on all the podcasting apps, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you want to use. We're probably the exception there. of Spotify. Yeah. Yes. Because they, they got weird. Own, they have their own weird thing. 
It's complicated. Yeah, so not complicated. Spotify, but I don't know how many people actually use them for podcasts. But anyway, and then we're also we have our Twitter, uh, seventy two PC official underscore official. Uh, we tweet our plays of the day out there every uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm lazy on the weekend, so you get Monday through Friday. Be happy. <laughs> um, and we get some other random stuff. We let you know when the team, if someone's around, to let everyone know the team's playing. So yeah, all that kind of fun jazz. And with that, I think that's, I think that's all we got. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So until right. next week, game on, everybody. See you, everyone.